Uh, there's another one in James chapter 1, verse 22. It says, but be ye doers of the word. Guess what number that is? 3056, Logos. So we are to be doers of the Logos, not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. Romans chapter 10. Now watch this. Romans chapter 10, verse 17 says, So then faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word. But now notice the word here is number 4487, which is the word rhema. And now see, people say, well, see right there, right there, Curry. It says that, if, that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the rhema. So you have, to have, you have to hear the rhema, and that's when faith comes, is when you hear the rhema, when it's quickened to you. That's not what it said. Matter of fact, I'm going to go back and read this to you, okay? In the Greek New Testament, there are two primary words translated into English in the King James as word. One of these is number 3056, logos, which means this. Now, I'm going to give you the definition, the actual dictionary or a concordance di definition. <clears throat> it means something said, including the thought of it or the concept. By implication, a topic. So the logos is a topic that's being talked about. For instance, a topic of healing, topic of deliverance. See, when you know what the Bible says about healing, you have the logos of healing, right? Now, it also includes uh, the thought, or by implication, a topic, a subject of discourse, also reasoning, meaning the mental faculty or motive, and it means to many times... Um, it is the word spoken with an idea of what to do. Okay? Now, the other is number 4487. That's the word rhema. And it means, now listen carefully, an utterance, individually, collectively, or specifically. It means by implication, a matter or a topic. Now, get this. If you read these two definitions, they're almost identical. Almost identical. Now, as you can tell, there is practically no difference between the two words in the Strong's Concordance Dictionary. In today's Christianity, we have a teaching that has infected virtually every aspect of the Christian life and doctrine. We've had, quote-unquote, Bible teachers tell us that the word rhema means a special divine impartation or a leading, okay, a quickening. They have said that a rhema word from God was necessary before you could act on a scripture. They have taught that you do not have to obey or perform every scripture, just those that the Holy Spirit quickens to you. These, quote-unquote, teachers must have received a rhema word from God to get this teaching because it's not in the Bible. There has been much said about the difference between the two words, logos and rhema. Now, this is an article, okay, reproduced from Vine's Expository Dictionary of Biblical Words, which is accepted pretty much by every Scholar, the significance of rhema as distinct from logos is exemplified in the injunction to take the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, the rhema of God. This is Ephesians chapter 6, verse 17. Here the reference is not to the whole Bible as such, but to the individual scripture, which the spirit brings to our remembrance for use in a time of need a prerequisite being the regular storing of the mind with Scripture. Now, what that means is this. So this is not a quickening. This is a remembering. Do you get it? So in the middle of a situation, when a Scripture comes up, that is the rhema aspect. Now, notice this. If you look at every place where the word rhema is used in the New Testament, you will always find that it is in a scripture that refers to action or being acted upon, a, a scripture. So technically, you hear the Logos. And when you hear the Logos, now when you act upon the Logos, when you do the Logos, James 1.22, be therefore doers of the Logos. When you do the Logos, it becomes rhema to you in the sense that now it is real and now you live by it. Man does not live by bread alone, but by every word of God, every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. That word, word, is rhema. Why? What does that mean? Man does not live by bread alone, 
but by every word he acts upon that comes from God. Do you get that? Now, let's, get, let's look at it this way. There are thousands of laws on the books, so to speak, here in America. Now, most of you don't even know the laws, but you live life normally. And in doing that, you're, most of you are keeping most of the laws you don't even know exist. But you're doing it because it's the right way to live. And most laws are there so that you will live the right way. That's essentially what they're for. Now, it, let's say that you live, okay? Let, let's say you're doing almost all the laws, but let's say there's 100 laws, but you're only doing 90. Then you're not living by every law. Does that make sense? So let me ask you this. If, if there's 100 laws and you're only doing 90, you're obviously not living by every law. Is that right? So now, but what laws are you living by? The ones you do. Is that right? Now, notice, the rhema is you living by the logos you do. Now, you say, Curry, why is this a big deal? Why, why am I making it a big deal? I'm making it a big deal because too many people want to do something for God. They want to obey God. They want to live the life. They want to lay hands on the sick. They want to cast out devils. They want to preach the gospel. But too often, they have been taught, well, you, you can't do that unless God quickens it to you or unless God leads you to do it. See, this is where the idea of leading and this idea of quickening, or what, what they call rhema, it's where it overlaps. Because it is, it is amazing how many people want to... It's amazing how many people are led to do what they want to do. And how many are not being led to do what they don't want to do. And they're waiting, so-called, for that leading, when in reality, they don't want to do it, and it would have to be a much stronger leading to get them to do it. But the fact is, if the Bible says do it, you are to do it. Now, the Bible also tells us that we are to preach or proclaim, demonstrate the word, be instant, in season and out, which means what? When opportunity presents itself and when it doesn't. That's what it literally means. So if you are to preach the word and then there are to be signs following the preach to confirm the word that was preached, if you are to preach the word and you are to do that when opportunity presents itself and when it doesn't, then you're supposed to preach the word all the time. Is that right? Now, that means that you're supposed to do it even when you don't feel like it. Even whenever... You Well, when you don't want to do it, you are still supposed to do it. Amen? Amen. 